Welcome to Cinematic Syndrome, where your hosts Bryce Thompson, Brian Hammond, and Cody Ryrie have a sickness. You're sick. There's this disease. I, I, I think all my friends are getting it. It's the best collection I've ever seen. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. The Force will be with you always. Did you think you were God, Brandon? The stuff uh, that dreams are made of. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Wendy, darling, light of my life. He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. And the medic gets out and says, oh my God. Tell us the Train don't run out of Wichita. Unless you're a hog or a cattle. I drink it up. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Stop f***ing come near me. Jeff. Stop. Stop. I don't want to get sick. I don't want any of us getting sick. We're all going to get it. I it's getting worse. I'm getting better. What would you little maniacs like to do first? Welcome to Cinematic Syndrome. I'm Cody Ryrie, and I am joined tonight by Brian Hammond, and Brian has brought a special guest. Brian, why don't you introduce us to our guest? Hey, um, Kaylin, say hi. Hi. This is my wife, my better half, my dearly beloved, whatever. Yeah. The smart one. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, and continuing on, we have just gotten out of literally uh, a screening of Alien Covenant. It is Thursday night. We caught the earliest show. We're sitting in a car in the parking lot, and we're about to break this down. And we're hoping the car, the cops don't bust us this time. Is yeah. that right, Cody? Long story. Yeah. Anyway, um, all right, so I want to hear first from both of you. You know, What were your thoughts about Alien movies, this one in particular? What did you heard? What did you expect before coming in? Well, I guess I'll start since you're the noob. Um, as far as, uh, you know, the Alien movies, I've seen them all. It's been some time. Of course, we went in October and saw, you know, the theatrical showing, the the 35mm print. So that's the most recent one I've revisited, mm-hmm. save Prometheus. That one I watched probably within two months ago. And uh, what I liked about that, or what I had heard about it, is that this kind of gets it more on track with uh, the Alien franchise little less Prometheus and more mm. Alien. And I think that's true. I think that's safe to say. And um, I liked it. Okay. We'll get more into that. Kaylin? Um, It's been a long time since I've seen the uh, Alien franchise, but I pretty much expected to be grossed out with lots of splurting things coming mm. out of everybody's body. And I wasn't disappointed. So, <laughs> um, yeah, not not too bad. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, as, as for me, I'm, you know, I've watched all four of them in the last month, probably. Yeah. Probably and four times. In the I've seen the <laughs> first, year, right? <laughs> yeah. The first two, a bunch. The first is my favorite. And I have rewatched Prometheus and got ready for it. And I had read, there was very mixed feelings on this movie too. Maybe a little less mixed towards the good than Prometheus. Um, We've talked about this before, but I had mixed feelings, as did you, Brian, on Prometheus. There was some good, some bad, whatever. Um, this one, I feel like, was also a very mixed bag for me. Um, if you were overall say, did you like it, not like it, I would say, yeah, I liked it. I don't think it was a bad movie. But every time it felt like it was going to go one direction, it felt like there was kind of a rough gear shift, and it would go into something else. It was kind of the a marriage of Prometheus and Alien, they didn't. They didn't jettison Prometheus altogether. There was some, no. you know. There's a lot of callbacks. Yes, yes, and I don't want to ruin it. We're keeping this. This is the first part of this spoiler free. But I felt like it was kind of an uneasy marriage between the two, and it wasn't necessarily terrible. But it, it felt like there was, like I said, rough gear shifts. That some of the flow was a little rough. Um, I things I did like. I thought Michael Fassbender was very. Uh, interesting in the movie really good mm-hmm. i like him he's a good actor but i think it's probably an actor's dream to do this role he gets to play i don't think this is too much of a spoiler but he gets to play a couple different things and stretch himself and i thought he did a good job with that i thought everybody was good actually there wasn't any bad acting in the film yeah i, I like. was this isn't a spoiler but i i was unaware that danny mcbride was in this oh and, really yeah and that was kind of a loose cannon for me. I was like, how's, <laughs> how's that going to play out? Don't get me wrong. I like my, my Danny McBride in, in small doses, you know, <laughs> uh, in my uh, adult comedies usually. And so, uh, you know, he did he did good. 
I thought. Yeah. And that was going to be a negative for me. Like, I totally expected that he's going to ruin it. I so. thought he was going to be a cheese ball because I think the last movie mm. I saw him in, he was just like a total goof. Uh, so I didn't know what to expect from yeah, him. Yeah, I think we watched 30 minutes or less together not too long ago. and Yeah, yeah, that was cheesy. And so. so I expected it to be cheesy. I saw an interview with him, and I, I'm not as familiar with Danny McBride. In fact, I don't know that I've ever seen anything with him in it before this. I don't watch a lot of comedies. So... <laughs> um, so I, it was a blank slate for me, but I saw a couple interviews with him uh, about this movie, and apparently he is a huge Alien fan. Yeah. And he uh, he rented the VHS of Aliens when he was like 12 and watched it without his parents' permission and had to hide it and watch it in sections, and it's just a big thing for him. Mm-hmm. And so it was really Scott's idea to cast him. He didn't beg for it or anything. Hmm. But once he got put in, he was really, really excited about it and apparently took it more seriously than he's taken anything else up to this point. (laughs) Yeah, I've never seen anything similar to this role. See, if I didn't know he was a comedian, I wouldn't have known from this movie. I mean, he was funny every now and then, but he seemed like a very normal actor. Yeah. So one thing I also did like is it seemed like the median age of the cast was late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. You know, this wasn't like teenage slasher replacement. And also the, the whole, if you haven't, this isn't a spoiler. The whole idea is this is a colonization mission, the Covenant's a ship, and it's made up of couples. Even the crew is all married yeah. to each other. And I had heard about that beforehand. I was a little worried about how that might be. It was like Big Brother in space with a giant space spider. But it doesn't really play like <laughs> that. And uh, it also it, uh, it gives people reasons to make bad decisions because their spouses are in danger. So, because you have to have reasons for bad decisions in alien movies. Because if everybody made good decisions, then bad things would never happen. But I will say, one of my negatives was I felt like people in this movie had a bad case of the dumbs. Yeah. Oh but isn't that, isn't that what every alien movie does? I don't let's, know. let's be realistic. It is. Yeah, but you've got scientists. Let, I would just want to see people actually be smart about things. It just David was smart. Yes. <laughs> I, he was a machine. <laughs> Spoiler alert. A little bit. Anyway, but yeah, that's not really a spoiler because you see David at the very first of the film. And he's in Prometheus. And he's in Prometheus and he survived Prometheus. So that's Michael Fassbender's uh, uh, role. But I, I, I felt like things like, do we go off on the unknown planet without spacesuits? Yeah. On, you know, and the only thing you think about when they open the door, or, or, you seen Galaxy Quest? Yes. All I could think about was the guy, the red shirt, saying, "Is there air? You don't know." And he's like <laughs> trying to cover his mouth. Or, I mean, they knew there was air, but I mean, it was obviously a very bad decision to go out on the planet without any kind of protection of any kind. Yeah, and we're getting into spoilers here. Yeah, I, that's I think true. We ought to call that's it. true. Let's let's do our final, all right. All right. Our. Uh... Do you want to do a, a number rating, and then we'll go into spoilers? Do you want to do that? Okay, so so let's say Alien is a ten, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Aliens I would, too is a 10 I would for say me. Prometheus is a seven, and this was an eight for me. I think oh, it was wow, a, really? yeah. I think it was a perfect bridge between Prometheus and the Alien franchise. You you don't. It's not as heavy as Prometheus. Um, it's, True, it has a lot of callbacks. Explains some things that Prometheus, you know, kind of left. It did have answers for things. Yeah, yeah. it did, and and so I think it was. I think it was that perfect bridge. I think it was. It was good. So it's it's not a 10, but, you know, it's... Not an instant classic. Yeah. That's my thoughts. Okay. Out of 10? Um, out of 10. Well, I had some issue with some of the character tropes that were there. It was pretty cheesy in some spots for me. I have to say, <laughs> they were things I automatically expected to happen. I'm only going to give this a 6. Because mm. I could see what was happening before it happened and that drives me nuts when i can there, see there that. was some of that yeah <laughs> definitely there was some of that it's really funny because some for, for me like predictability is never a negative yeah. i understand why it is but i guess i've i don't know i've watched so many movies and i i love old movies and old movies if they're anything they're predictable because yeah. they set the thing yeah, that's been formula. copied over and over yeah. again and so that at some point got beat out of me but i totally get that so that wasn't a negative for me because I never thought, I wonder what's going to happen next. I mean, you know, you go into an alien movie, there are certain things you know are going to happen. Mm-hmm. And when those things didn't happen in Prometheus, a lot of people got pissed. Yeah. And so this time, Which, you, you have to say, he was like, okay, you wanted aliens and you wanted violence and you wanted scary, then he poured it on. We talked you know. about this before, and sorry to cut you off. No, 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 but, yeah. 
we talked about this before when we went in, why he left Alien off of the Prometheus, uh, you know, mm-hmm. the title. using it as a subtitle. Mm-hmm. And I think that explains it. I think it, there would have been, you know, an uproar. Everyone kind of knew it was in the univor- same universe, and the Die Hard fans obviously knew. But if he had put that in, people would go expecting a completely different movie and would yeah. have been horribly disappointed. And so I think that kind of answers our question. Well, and can I say this? The... And this is a well-known thing with me. The first time I see a movie is always the worst time I see a movie. So the first time I see a movie, I always rank it lower. I have a chance to think about it, digest it. I rewatch it. I almost always, without exception, like it more mm-hmm. as I revisit things. That being said, I'm with the six. I think that's a pretty good rating for it. I would put Prometheus at a six as well. I kind of liked them equally. Uh, Aliens a ten. Aliens is a ten. And then the other ones are somewhere around the same level. There's not... Still, I don't think there's a bad Alien movie. I think they're all interesting. Mm-hmm. And they're all worth watching. I I have a feeling that as I watch this one more, I will like it more than Prometheus. I think it will go up. I for sure liked it more than Prometheus. Mm-hmm. I mean, not as far as uh, story necessarily, but as far as enjoyability. Yeah. Sit back in your seat and eat some popcorn. Which we didn't have. But no. And were how M&Ms. could you eat during that is what I want to know. <laughs> Cody well, was it was popping, easy. <laughs> Cody was popping peanut M&M's like there was no tomorrow during the bloodiest scenes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I had no appetite after some of the stuff. I was like, okay, I'm done. All, All right. So, well, we before good? we get to spoilers, say, like, we. I think we should emphasize I think this is the most violent alien movie in the series. And I've, I've watched them all recently. Alien Resurrection is pretty rough. But I think that this one is, I don't know, more scatological. I don't know. It almost it was, it was like they had. It looked very naturey. Does yeah. that make sense? Like the horrible things that happen to people's bodies look like something that you'd see under a microscope or mm-hmm. on a nature documentary. And Resurrection is much more comic booky. But uh, yeah, so be warned. This is probably the most violent. It is. There's no question. It's the most violent alien movie that's been made so far. So that's. All right, now if that's all you wanted to know, how violent it was, what we thought of it, well, there you go. You can go watch it now. I would recommend you go watch it. I thought it was... Yeah. I don't want my six to turn people away from it. Like I said, and I'm harsh, I would but... say see it in the theater. If you're an Aliens fan, oh, you sure. know, go see it in the theater. I was just going to say the same thing. Don't wait for a home see video. See it in a theater. Oh, and the last thing I will say before we get into spoiler territory, I did think the Aliens were really, really well done yeah. in this movie. Yeah. And we'll get more into that, I'm sure, in the spoiler section, but... Talk about like locomotion and sound design and whatever else. That was phenomenal and worth seeing on the big screen. So, spoilers. Let's get into it. Where do we start? Oh, gosh. Can Um, I start with the first thing that I knew was going to happen? Sure. So, as soon as they land on the planet and we find out it's David, I knew right away. I don't know about you guys, but I knew right away. That that, he was evil? That he was evil and he was (laughs) going to switch spots with... Oh, um, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. right oh, I away. In fact, I we, just... were, we were talking about it, but <laughs> there were a couple times when you're like, well, I guess maybe it won't go that no, way. No, Surely no. it wouldn't, but... Oh, no, I knew the whole time, and that was a little frustrating, because that's like towards the beginning of the film, and I'm like, no. Ugh, you got to be kidding me, really? <laughs> so, that was spoiler me. it didn't bother me as much. Yeah. I will say, I said, I think Michael Fassbender must have had the time of his life, because I think it's every oh, yeah. actor's dream to play two polar opposite characters in one film and then get to kiss yourself <laughs> as an actor. I mean, oh. that is like the yeah. ultimate <laughs> expression of, you know, kiss yourself, fight yourself, kill yourself, you know, well, like... He, he did such a great job, too, with, you know, he uses different accents in it, mm-hmm. and so it's it was really interesting to see him play that, and then the emotion that you could see in David's face, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, I almost wish, you know, he had been there 10 years, like... I wish they wouldn't have called that out. You know, I guess maybe there was a year on Prometheus, probably. There was, right? yeah. There was. Okay, yes, so yeah. it, it was a definitive time, I guess. But it seems like he would have been there for longer than 10 years. Mm-hmm. Or it would have been more fascinating for him to have been there maybe an unknown period of time. 100 years. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's one thing I noticed. But Yeah, he, he did a great job of even body movement. <clears throat> Um, between the two different characters, I, I thought that was awesome because you could definitely tell. I mean, it was him, but it was two definite. It wasn't characters. hard to keep them separate. Oh no! Like you Not always at all. knew who was who. I always who. knew yeah. who was who. Yeah. There was no problem with that. 
Huh. Yeah, well, and I think everybody in the cast, again, we said this before, did a great job. We had, that was kind of interesting that the very first scene of the film is a callback to pre Prometheus. Mm hmm. And so it's the Wayland guy played by, um,. Memento. Uh, Guy, Pierce. Guy Pierce, yeah. Oh, and gosh. I didn't recognize him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's much a much bigger part of Prometheus, but he's much older in that film. And yeah. so it's... I loved the first scene. Mm-hmm. And I will say this, the sh- first shot of the film is the same first shot as Blade Runner, which is fascinating. Well, I don't know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's very close. The, the all-seeing eye kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I wondered if they were... Working because we have know we have a new Blade Runner movie coming out. If there is some kind of we're going to try and merge or whatever else, because they're both very much about artificial intelligence mm-hmm. and artificial intelligence starting to hate humans and at least similar themes. I'm not saying they're doing a shared universe thing. Oh, yeah. that's the craze right now. So I'm sure if they could figure out some way to do it, they would. But that's not in the movie. That's not a no. a thing. But I thought that was an interesting stylistic choice. It, it made me think of it immediately because I'm a Blade Runner nut. Mm-hmm. But I love that whole first scene where David is born, and you see that's going on. And then it's just left for a long, long time. But it was a really good way to set up when David saves them from the aliens and he comes back in the movie. It didn't feel as out of left field Mm -hmm. because they had that scene and then they had the discovery of the ship. I did think that um, I was surprised that um, Numi Rapace was used as uh, a cadaver and some drawings. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Like she was announced in the cast and I guess they had to have her for the movie and she's even in one of these videos they released before the film to get you ready for it yeah. she puts David back together in so this video so were you a little disappointed stuff. that she wasn't in as much yeah as I was I, I was excited I like her as an actress a lot mm-hmm. and I thought that would have been another neat way to tie it back and the fact that they got her back I was like great let's do it and then she's in a, a fuzzy hologram and she's a cadaver yeah mm-hmm. essentially yeah <clears throat> If it were any other film, well, never mind. <laughs> Not sure where I was going there. <laughs> I was just saying, essentially, I mean, they just, they could have CGI'd all that. I mean, she didn't yeah, even have to exactly. be a credit. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like channeling Star Star Wars, like with, with Carrie Fisher type um, stuff. I see, yes. Why did she have to show up? Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't. I thought that was kind of a wasted opportunity. I mean, at least use her. I will say one of my favorite scenes in the film was when David bombs the engineers. Yeah. That was the one moment that felt kind of horrific. It did. Like, the other thing was kind of scary and tense and whatever else, but that had this weird, like, apocalyptic, like, make me hurt in my <laughs> jeans kind of a feel. Yeah. Which I liked. So, so, David, interesting fellow. I, I want to talk about him because there's some okay. stuff I picked up on. Um... He has a Hitler complex. And the reason I came up with that is, first... Wagner. Yeah, you've got Wagner, and and he's also creating this perfect species, Ooh. correct? Yeah. And so we hear Wagner as he's showing us this perfect species that he's he's created. And what else? What's what's the name of the ship they're on? Well, the Covenant. And what, what typically, like, is Hitler known for searching for? You know, he sent out parties. I don't know if you've watched history stuff. It's true, though. He did. We have watched Indiana Raiders Jones. Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah. <laughs> okay. Forget what? the religious stuff. We've, that's, that's canon. No. We've seen it in Indiana oh, Jones. It, it really happened. Right. But, but the, the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant, I mean, it just kind of was all like, I'm like, at the end, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a throw to Hitler. I, Here I we go. I did find that fascinating, his obsession with creating. And mm. that real that exchange with uh, Michael versus Michael. Yes. Or, okay, David versus, uh, what's the other guy's name? Walter. Walter. Walter, yeah. That exchange where he's playing the, fu- the flute. I know. And teaching him to create. I f- that was fascinating to me. It, mm-hmm. A little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> some of the verbiage that was <laughs> used. I was, <laughs> like, <laughs> there, was, yes. there was some audible some like, chuckles. Some symbolism, <laughs> yes. <it> was, uh, <laughs> we'll we'll let, leave I mean, that little Easter egg for you. When uh, somebody else asked you to blow their flute, I mean, there's some things <laughs> that, I don't know. <laughs> you use your fingers in a certain Oh, fashion. my goodness. Okay, we went there. We could have left it. Uh, Why can't we be ambiguous? Seriously. Because like, it was too good. I had to, uh, I had to well, talk about okay, it. Okay, let me... Let, we'll go... I'll get you back on okay. the tracks. Okay, okay here we go. Back back mm-hmm. on the tracks. Yes. Um, so, <clears throat> David, I can understand why he wanted to create, though, because he, he was given more intellect, apparently, more human-like, and every human 
uh, you know, quote unquote, wants to create, right? We want to have kids or they want to create. I mean, think about like artists, they're creating art, they're creating music. And apparently he created everything he could except for one thing, life. life. That's interesting. So I like it better. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, when I look at the David part, that's what made me like it. Now, when we look at who's getting killed off and when, I could always say, at eh, killed, at eh, killed, at eh, killed, because it follows every single yeah, film. Like, like, like oh, well, it especially the Alien franchise. Like, when when the Alien starts, an Alien film, you're like, okay, who's going to be the lone survivor? You're just kind of, like, picking off. And and so it, it did kind of have that, that kind of interesting, um, you know, dynamic between the, the couples. And, mm-hmm. you know, you didn't know how it was going to play out for sure. And I really loved the creation theme in it. Like, I keep... Well, hard. can I say set design, too? Like, I love David's... his All his art is all over the walls yeah. and all of his things he's done. All it looked very creations. medieval. You know, like, it looked yeah. like something... And scrolls and things. And, like, I loved that whole... The whole look of that. And also, the again, the whole Holocaust area of all the engineers that got burned up or eaten up or whatever. It was very Pompeii. Yeah, you know, like, mm-hmm. but so that's when it touched that kind of like, I always have a thing about these big mass extinction, whatever that touches some kind of chord inside me, and I thought that was really well done uh, in the film. It, it was more of a callback to Prometheus than I thought they were ever going to do. Yeah. I thought there'd be like little mention of it, and they totally leave it behind. And in reality, you need to see Prometheus before you see this movie. I mean, maybe you could make sense of it. <laughs> But well, you get a lot more out of it. I haven't seen Prometheus, oh, okay. but I could totally Actually, make sense of it. Actually, you have. We we've seen it in the theater. I'm almost positive, but uh, that's five years ago, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, and we're talking about five years ago in my memory. Hey, do you have the same <laughs> <laughs> condition I do? Um, yeah. So the more we talk about it, the more I like it. Mm-hmm. I think that it was a perfect bridge between the two, and it was a nice little. It, it gave me everything I wanted because yeah. I, I don't want it to just jettison, you know, Prometheus. No, I, I want no. those questions answered and kind of make sense of this universe that Scott's building. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I, I really liked well, it. OK. And there's another scene that I forgot that I liked. Um, it was really perverse in a way, but it was the birth of the first xenomorph as we know the xenomorph. Right. Yeah. Mm. So Billy Crudup, who I'll get back to as a character, you know, he gets... He had a case of the dumbs, and he got um, infected with the alien, and it burst out of his chest for the first time. And we can talk about it. It burst out of all kinds of other places oh. earlier mm-hmm. on. But um, that's the first xenomorph, and when it comes out of his chest, it was interesting that they played it almost as like a, I don't know, it was like a holy moment. Like, the music was almost like... Ew. Majestic. Yeah, and... yeah. Well, it was like an and actual it's... birth scene, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> this is my creation. I... And you could tell David oh, was getting yeah. emotional, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It really was his creation, and and it's interesting. The one thing that uh, he couldn't do, you know, he became obsessed with, and and it dictated everything he did. I do like the nod also to the fact that he wasn't totally right in the head by Walter pointing out that he mislabeled some story. Was he said it was Byron and it was really Shelley yeah. Ozymandias, mm-hmm. I think. Which and would that really happen? Well, he's circuits aren't frying right. I think it was the idea. Like things are starting okay. to go haywire, and uh, I guess he's ten years old. No upgrades. No. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there was things weren't always right to begin with, you know. But so, as far as the emotion, I, I don't remember. Did he show a lot of emotion in Prometheus? Well, he, first did you notice in Prometheus he's the bad guy in Prometheus too? Yeah. Because he takes the black goo and he infects the guy on purpose and he does all these things. So from the very beginning. Yeah, he, he's the devil. He had the obsession. Well, and he does the quote from... Uh, oh, uh, Byron? Or? No, I don't know who it's from. I'm not... My degree is in general education. Yeah. Or, or general whatever. The But no, it was the quote of better to uh, reign in hell than serve oh, in yeah, heaven. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Which is what the devil says in uh, Dante's Inferno. Oh. Inferno. And so that was definitely a nod to that he's basically... And yeah. Billy Crudup's character, who is a, uh, a a faithful character, I was a little worried at first because, and I'm okay with characters that are have faith of some kind being portrayed as nefarious. I mean, those people exist in real life. Mm-hmm. And I'm totally fine with that. But I was I liked the fact that he was somewhere in between because there's sometimes when you were like you were frustrated with him because 
he was very by the book, and other times he seemed very much like a real person. I thought he did a really good job with something that may have been underwritten. So, as far as the cast goes, I liked everybody. I liked the girl, um, Catherine Waterston. Uh, which role She's, was Danny? Uh, da- uh, Daniels. Da- yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniels. Yeah, Daniels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought she did a great job. I like the fact that I looked her up beforehand because I said I was there was some criticisms about the ages in the movie, and she's thirty seven, and so she's not a you know, yeah. and she was married to uh, James Franco for about thirty seconds. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I thought it was interesting that you get somebody like James Franco in the movie for a cameo, and you have him do one behind the or yeah one like. In world video, and then they burn him up, yeah. and that's it. Well, that's what gave me hope in the very beginning, though, is because one of our big stars gets burned up, and I'm like, okay, there's going to be a little mm. bit of I'm unknown sure happening here. Danny McBride had something to do with that. I'm pretty sure they're pals. They buddies. I mean, they're yeah. in a lot of movies together. I mean, Pineapple Express. I'm sure Danny McBride's in that. I'm, I'm pretty positive. Yeah. So. Well, when I was looking up Danny McBride before we saw the film, and they're both in uh, This Is The End or something like yeah. that together. So, yeah. Buddies, I thought that was interesting that he would make a cameo. Yeah. And again, I think that's one of its purposes was you'd be like, oh no, well anybody can go. Mm-hmm. But it didn't seem to work because nobody else was really a name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, yeah, I was kind of excited and then it just all of a sudden clicked right into the eight, That was like, weird. The typical um, uh, horror movie, whatever, slasher. Yeah. Mm. I liked the, um, the early pale aliens that were tiny. Mm-hmm. Those the those were creepier things. than the bigger ones. Well, I think. Did you notice, like in his drawings on the wall, he had like all these different bugs, right? And then mm-hmm. he talks about he goes through the stages of the creation and how he created all these different, and and you can see how it morphs into different things as he adds different species into it. You know? Yeah. And, yeah he's really trying to play God. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bottom line. He's trying to create an old his own world, you know, with with his own creations and. Maybe, you know, they they always talk about small small man syndrome. You know, maybe, <laughs> yes. maybe he didn't have anything where he's a cyborg, mm-hmm. and so he went way over the top. Went, wow, I, that's where he went. Huh? You know, there's, a, <laughs> there's actually <laughs> no, there's actually a name for uh, that, syndrome, that syndrome, the God Maker syndrome. I can't remember what it's called, but there is a syndrome. Yeah. The, play, the play my flute syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. You always have to take it one <laughs> step too far. No. I, I take it down pretty low, but you, you just kick the legs out from under me. Uh, let's see. What else do we want to talk about? Um, um, so when did you guys know David wasn't, or I mean, Walter wasn't Walter? Well, he didn't heal. I knew. That was another thing, too. Yeah. And he yeah. gave the weird look and whatever else. Well, and so it was never a surprise. Well, the cut on the face yeah. surprised me. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, there's some issues here. Because Did he cut his own hand off? I'm oh, yeah. assuming so. And at first I was like, okay, is that the correct hand? I couldn't remember <laughs> which hand, you know, and I'm like. Oh. There were just too many, um, you know, lingering shots on, on the hand and on the scar. And, you know, mm. I, I don't think Scott was trying to keep that a secret. Um, just kind of. I was a little upset by that. I'll be honest. Because I don't like the whole... I didn't like the very, very end of the film. It didn't ruin it for me. But every other Alien movie ends basically happy. Yeah. Except for Alien 3. But that doesn't matter. So the, but most of them, you know, they, they resolve the issue. This is the first one, besides Prometheus. I guess Prometheus had this issue too, kind of. That didn't feel like a whole thing. Yeah. That it felt like it needed a... Oh, another chapter. And I don't know, I'm a little irritated yeah. with that in general right now. With You know what's what's interesting? I, I do agree with you, but I liked how he shot it with uh, with him, you know, hacking up, puking up the, <laughs> oh. the embryos. <laughs> Not specifically that, yeah. but um, him playing, you know, entrance to the, uh, the gods of Valhalla, you know, from uh, Wagner. And him walking in, and he has 2,000 creatures to play with. To play with. That's true. That's just, it, this it is heaven per- for him. It huh? was a perfect ending. That's true. I think. That's true. Yeah, it was I just great. grew. I grew attached to Walter, and I grew attached to Daniels. I uh, see. I grew attached to and Walter. Danny McBride. So yeah, I grew attached to Walter. So and kinda, I was well, so Daniels oh. and Danny McBride are still alive. I mean, yeah. we don't know what's going to happen, but <laughs> hey, yeah. there's two thousand other people that he can play with. I mean, uh-huh. maybe they're the last one. Well, I mean, you... it takes seven years to whatever <laughs> okay, so with two thousand people. You're, you're hip on news and all that. Is there yeah. going to be another one? He before? says there's three more. Three what? more. Three more yeah. prequels. Yes. 
Wow. He says the script for the next one's already written and they're shooting in 14 months. He has to do another movie in between. Wow. Well, I'm really, I'm even more excited about the ending then. Because that is a really interesting sp- switch on it, though, because it is it's heaven for him. He's been yeah, given everything he, he could ever into want. Valhalla. Yeah, yeah. He, oh, and it's the music. He's yeah. the oh gosh. Yeah, it's it was, really well thought out. It is. It is. I just I, I like Walter. Once, damn it, you're going to be up. You're going to be up a little higher. Just wait. I was just, Walter's my favorite character. I really liked Walter, and then they just <clears throat> unceremoniously, you know. Yeah, yeah, he just doesn't show back up. And how did he like? Show up before that just didn't make any sense. And to me, one, right? one thing I had because he hope. healed himself. What did he do to totally make it so he couldn't heal himself this time? I don't know. And well, they took off, so maybe he couldn't get back yeah. to him. Maybe he'll yeah. show up in the next one. Who knows? Who knows? But mm, the, David fingers. was already getting the weird gurgly voice that Ash had when he was dying, and then when Walter showed Walter in air quotes showed back up, his voice was fine. Yeah. So that's why I thought, oh, it can't be him. But that's true. It it was. Maybe he got some upgrades from Walter before yeah, he no, left. Who knows? Really stupid. I like Walter. Mm. Well, they kissed. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, was, maybe that's one of the, the transfers oh. of information. He did play his flute. <laughs> yes, that's it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm, back I'm to sorry. That. <laughs> there were audible chuckles when, yeah. that, when that part came up. And the way he worded How did they not? I mean... Did they mean to leave that in? Really? I think so. Oh, I think like... that there's a level of heightenedness to the whole thing, especially with David. The character of David is a very opera character. Mm-hmm. I oh, mean, yes. he's big and large from the life very beginning, and... from yes. his creation. Well, in his intro into or the inception. film, when he comes back, you know, he makes an entrance and yeah. he's yeah. wearing this very dramatic clothing and Assassin's long hair. Creed-ish, yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> you're just thinking, yeah, totally. So that, that I didn't bother me. I think there there felt like there was a knowing sense of humor mm-hmm. in parts of that, which which is a throwback to the original franchise. Yeah. I mean, there's humor in it, and I think. Uh, no, I don't think. What? What? Uh, what? <laughs> nothing. What do we think about the uh, the the violence of the movie? The the gore. It didn't phase me at all. <laughs> I am a hardened horror hound. I can see just about anything. And so it didn't really affect me. She's um, the better barometer for that. So so when the when the first aliens come out, you know, we have the two this you know, two first infected people and you see yeah. them. That doesn't bother me. It's when there's like really forceful entry of Things and then all there of a sudden, is some they, symbolism. <laughs> right, there. Yes, there. There's some very. I, I don't know. It was some of it didn't bother me, and some of it I was like, okay, I'm not. I didn't throw up. I mean, there's been a movie before where I actually, I'm um, audibly dry heaved during yeah. a movie that we saw. So it wasn't as bad as that. Because mm. I, I guess, well, I was it's expecting. sci-fi violence. Like right. I said, it's not real life violence. Yeah. And having been to a birth myself, I can say that... <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I've never been on that side of it, so it's, I don't know. It's, I don't horrific. Know it's like, horrific. It could be in this film. <laughs> I mean, I did have C-sections and I couldn't see anything, but apparently he could, so... Yeah, it was like little xenomorphs coming out <laughs> of her stomach. It is. It is. It's yeah. very horrific. <laughs> okay, well, if you've watched a birth, you go on ahead. Yeah, you know, yeah. Have no problem. Way to ruin Alien for me. <laughs> I thought it was creative that I think Scott I don't know and I'm probably attributing things to really Scott that aren't really mm-hmm. there but it felt like there was a little bit of a sting from the reaction to Prometheus and there was almost a like well you want it to be violent I'll show you mm-hmm. violent and even then he was restrained it wasn't yeah. you know the whole thing you call I a don't... head floating in water restrained? <laughs> That's nothing. I think I, it that was, was kind of Oh, that, that kind of grossed me out a little. I have to say. I that it one... was... I'm going to sound like a psychopath. I thought it was kind of weirdly, grotesquely beautiful. Beautiful? Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> After when you couldn't see any of the blood and it was just the head. And yeah. Yes, it was beautifully done. Oh, kind of like the drawing. Like a lotus flower. Like the, kinda, the drawings it had. They could be and... grotesque, but they were also kind of... Yeah, it's the Del Toro moment, right? thing that I like so much. Yeah. Is it can be really like horrific, you know, and and the only blah, thing I think but... that didn't have to be in there was like the lovely shower scene because <laughs> I mean, really, did it have to have that? I mean, I guess that was the. It well, was, I don't know if it had to have that, but it was better for it. Oh, okay, let's put it okay, that way. Okay. I, that was the most slasherish. 
Yeah, it was. I that was totally. Yeah. I mean, you uh, knew exactly what was going to happen in that shot. Well, when the tail came up, yeah, whatever. I was like, oh. you moved. She did. She, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was some audible moving down the bench. Yeah, <laughs> so. I know exactly when she's uncomfortable <laughs> by her by her gestures. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I guess you guys don't have to worry about. You know, I'm a female. Remember, mm. little There's different, a different experience. things. Different things. Yeah. There. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I thought I thought that death scene was a little much. Much. That's the one yes. time. I guess I was done by then with all the stuff. I liked the killing of the alien. I thought that was well done. Yeah. Uh, um, how did it, that happen again? Claws. Remember? Claws. Yeah. The the things coming behind oh, her and she stands the there. She does the village thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. stands yeah. there and then whatever. Here's my question: Why did David allow them to kill the alien? Um, because he was trying to. He, them he, into thinking he, he was knew Walter. we had two embryos yeah. and, and he had to get them you know what he I'm had to get them in yeah. and what else I was wondering is maybe he wanted to see what his alien could do Ooh, against the human so he could maybe make some mm, those are very good answers to, to those questions yeah it's interesting that David's becoming a main character yeah. I mean they have to get him back for the next one he must already be signed up oh, you yeah. don't end the movie that way no. without no. you know he, I, he's like the whole movie, really. So Fassbender must like doing it, because otherwise, why would you? Mm-hmm. He's got so many offers around town, he can do whatever he wants to. He must enjoy the character. I mean, it's very, it's a, it's a big, you don't get to play that character every day. No. It's very, in its own way, it's over the top, but I, it's an over the top that I liked. Well, what's cool is he gets a, this kind of theatrical performance. He gets this highbrow kind of script, but he gets to be in a lowbrow, yeah. you know, in yeah. quotes, a lowbrow film. You know, with with horror and blood and guts. So, yeah, I I bet you it is a perfect, you know, uh, picture for him. What about technical merits? What do we think of the look of the film, the editing, the sound, the music? Mm -hmm. The music, a lot of it was direct quotes from the first Alien, from Jerry Goldsmith's score. The flutes, the da, 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 da. You you don't hear it unless you're listening for Mm -hmm. it. And then the opening credits, or the opening title sequence was a direct copy of the original Alien. And there was some music from Prometheus. I thought David played his own theme on his flute. The He played the theme from Prometheus on mm-hmm. the flute. And the last time that happened was when Mr. Incredible hummed his own theme in The Incredibles. <laughs> so I thought that was a weird kind of meta, I don't know, yeah. like, in thing there. But As far as technical merits, I think it was uh, great. Ridley Scott's always top yeah, notch. Yeah, it, it's always great. I, I was impressed. I was impressed by all the aliens, the different looks of the aliens. I mean, that was pretty lifelike. And showing how they morphed into each different uh, creation was kind of cool. Yeah, there was some real thought for the life cycle. And mm-hmm. how do we take it from, okay, it's some kind of biological weapon that mutates to what we see in Alien. And there was some real thought put into that and whatever else. I think they could have even gone further with it if they wanted to. I don't know if you had to get to the Xenomorph this time. I think if you wanted to, you could have, especially if they the got fans, three more movies. I think the fans kind of demanded it, mm. though. I think I think Fair his, enough. his hands were kind of tied with that. Well, it's weird, too, because in the first Alien, you see the alien like two or three times in the whole movie. And it's some skinny dancer in an outfit. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's tough. And it was weird for me to get accustomed to we're in daylight and there it is you yeah. know and it, it didn't lose a lot I thought it was going to lose more to be honest <clears throat> from what it did but it was so aggressive and so well done that it didn't lose everything for me but I did think it was more effective when when you saw less of it but I don't know how you keep that going and so I understand why they did what they did and it wasn't as bad as I was afraid it was going to be but I did like the design of the the like bluish ones Better than the final one, and then when they're they're scarier when they're small. Yeah, they're kind of creepy, you know. Yeah, I, well, they seem more lifelike when they're small. Yeah, it seems like something that actually could, I mean, not actually, but really could happen, I guess. Well, and scary, you know, little stuff is scary because it can hide and it can. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and it's very fast and can enter orifices easier. <laughs> You know, more creepy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, creepy. yeah. I, you know, Alien. I don't get scared by like monsters or horror films normally, but 
Alien, the look of Alien, the xenomorph has always freaked me out when the mm. multiple like mouths come it out really and good. and just like the dripping goo and I, I don't know it's why. It's psychosexual. And this, it's yeah, very psychosexual. Very. Yeah. It just it it really freaks me out. It is the one thing that actually causes my heart to kind of which we're not talking about this, but every horror film is very sexual. I mean, even you know, slashers and Jalo films. Well, uses fair enough. The blade as a symbol. Talking about imagery, though. Yeah, there's nothing quite as on but the nose. What I'm saying is, you know? is in that it's firmly set as a horror film in that perspective. Yeah. Well, in Alien, even the first one, the classic that it is, is a very well done, very well dressed up very well acted slasher movie Mm -hmm. you know it's yeah they get picked off one by one and you know whatever else so uh, you have to accept it for what it is i thought they were when you go back to that slasher trope i thought they were a little dumb in this one nobody was as dumb as the two guys in prometheus (laughs) or the not running to the side charlie's their own moment but the moments of dumb maybe not as bad more often Mm -hmm. and more widespread so the dumb that was concentrated in Prometheus kind of just spread out in well, this one. Well, and the whole no helmets thing. Like, Ugh. you're you're on a... How many light years or whatever away from your own solar system? And, and you're landing without helmets or, or anything. Like, couldn't you have at least had, you know, all of them but one maybe? And, <laughs> hey, you're the guinea pig, you know, well, that sort of attitude. The other thing that got me is... They knew, like, these faraway planets and what was on them, right? And, mm-hmm. light, like, what they looked like. Well, how could they not tell there was no life forms on this? Or there was movement. Yeah, how did like, that how, get missed? how would you miss that? How did they miss that? That That isn't explained. Well, and it seems like an easy fix because you have them go down there, you have them go out in their spacesuits, and then whatever he's engineered bores to the spacesuit. You know, like, and then you're like, well, at least they had, the, you know, you don't get the dumb thing. Yeah. But you just make the bad guy a little more... Yeah. Invasive, so I don't understand. Or a reason stuff. to take off the helmet, like he really wanted to smoke, that bothered... and, and he knew he shouldn't smoke and take <laughs> right? off his helmet. It's but an, he's dumb. The whole thing's an anti-smoking habit. ad. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but I mean that could have been explained. You yeah, know? it, it could have been common if you're sense. You're on a on a planet. I mean, he sticks his face. The the one guy sticks his, his face, face in right the thing. into the yeah. thing, and I'm like, you're supposed to be some kind of a like astronaut or yeah. come on really I know. you're not gonna and touch or get that you're close gonna to trust some... this one creepy guy that has already you know tried to communicate with the alien is friendly yes. alien fr- friendly right yeah and he lures you into this uh secret room where he wants you to look down this ball that, that it, got to me yeah, that it is ridiculous because in the first one you have all right, so um, poor John Hurt gets the thing attached to his yeah. face. They bring him back. Ripley won't let him in, right? Which makes you like Ripley because you're like, yeah, I get it. And then Ash opens the door and lets him in. And why does Ash do it? Well, because Ash is an, a synthetic or an android working for the company. So it's really well explained mm-hmm. how that happens in there, you know. And then in Aliens, they're kind of overwhelmed by their arrogance and whatever else. This one, it just, and Prometheus. Yeah. You know, let's go into this giant temple. Oh, there's air in here? Off come the helmets, you know, so... Yeah, it seems like it could have been um, vetted just a little bit more. Just a little bit. bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It didn't ruin the movie, but... No, no but I, it was just kind of obvious. I mean, even now, when you're looking at new species of spiders or plants, people don't put their faces. Yeah, they're... <laughs> right. I'm sorry, that just... They're like in a full-body <laughs> condom. I mean, yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there is no... Me part of that suit that is is not protected and yeah that's a glaring oversight on my I like, it's I easily wouldn't do fixed it. it's easily fixed yeah. and here's the thing if i'm billy crudup right and i've just shot the alien and he's like yeah come look at he goes if when he turns around and says how could you do that i've shot his head off by that point like i mean i would be so terrified all the time yeah and i wouldn't walk yeah. into the eggs and then it opens perfectly safe look inside no no way in hell no. I don't anybody know. does that. You know, no maybe way. he's just still, like, all mixed up from his wife dying. I don't know. Maybe he's okay. just not there. Let's talk so about the, can... the faith aspect. Yeah, yeah. Should we talk a little bit about that? I thought sure. that was kind of nice to have. I thought nice. he wasn't a monster, like no. I said. No, you know? no, he wasn't a... And he even... I mean, he even says, I know people think that because I have faith that I'm some kind of a zealot or... 
uh, yeah. something to that effect. And, and then there were there were people that that longed for that. They needed his faith, at especially that time. during thought, that time. I thought that yeah. was pretty cool. Well, and if you remember in Prometheus, uh, Numi Rapace's character, her main defining trait is her Christianity. So it's interesting that they're mixing. And Alien Three, they land on a um, a colony of Christian prisoners. So there's a big religious yeah. thing that's been weaved through all of them for well, some reason. I think well, Scott is obsessed with religion. I mean, you, you got Kingdom of Heaven and great I, movie. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think he weaves you know faith in all of. We won't talk about movie. Exodus because <laughs> well, the whole thing of this is creation, right? So remember, David, when he's with his Creator, asks him the question. Who created you, mm-hmm. right? And so uh, you see this faith thing hop in, and all of a sudden you're like, well, maybe we were created by an alien, whatever. I, I don't know, but it, it's kind of through the Well, that's thing. very much a throwback to Prometheus, because Prometheus is all about going to find our creators, and our creators are the engineers that you see get all nuked, whatever. And the whole part of the first film list, what I took from it was we meet our creators and it's not what we, we're very disappointed and they want to kill us for some reason, Mm -hmm. which they never did get to that. Yeah. That's one big explanation that needs to be. In the first one, that's a big thing is as soon as they wake up one of the engineers, he just goes postal on everybody. Yeah. And they were getting that ship ready full of those things that he dropped on the engineers to go to earth and do that very same thing. So we have no idea why they created people in the universe and why now they want to wipe him out. That's the big question of the first film, and now I come to think of it, they have not touched it in the second film. And they've pretty much cut off any answers they might get by nuking the home planet That's of true. those people. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it doesn't apply to this movie, yeah. specifically per se, but... Hmm. Should we... Uh, you about good? Yeah. Anything else to yeah. say? Should we readdress the scores? Has it changed at all, talking through things? I would pop it up to a 7. And I, and I had no desire to watch it again when we walked out. And this conversation has given me the desire to to visit it again. Just to look at it from, okay, what's the theme of creation and this and the theme? There's interesting themes throughout. It feels like there's more thought put into it than yeah. I was initially giving it credit for. I think I'll be more annoyed by the dumbness. Yeah. But mm. I'll get over it. So, yeah, I'd probably bump it up to a seven just after our conversation and a desire to watch it again, which I didn't have. Cool. Uh, I think I'm still at a six. I, <laughs> I, I'm i sorry. I think I saw The gore everything. factor has knocked you down to no, a six, though. No, no, it's not. It's the stupidity of the people and some yeah. of the, the things that just... I saw everything I needed to see to understand the movie. I caught... I like going back and seeing films that I... No, I missed stuff in. Mm. I didn't miss a thing in this. I'm sorry. It was pretty obvious. So I wouldn't have to watch it again. Yeah. That's how I feel. So I would rate it a six. Fun, eh, but not going to watch it again, probably. I'm a repeat watcher. You are. It's just a thing. It's because you have a problem, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Well, this has been the uh, Cinematic Syndrome Thanks for joining us. Uh, Let us know what your thoughts were of the movie. We're going to post this opening day. So, yeah, get out there and see it this weekend. And hopefully you didn't listen to the whole thing if you haven't seen it. And uh, we will catch you next time. Make sure to follow Cinematic Syndrome on Facebook and Twitter. The following views, opinions, and commentary are the sole property of the Cinematic Syndrome podcast. Any unauthorized reproduction without prior consent is prohibited. Any incidental music, audio clips, or film trailers are used for the sole purpose of film criticism commentary, as allowed under the Fair Use Act.